The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Tuesday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN. We kick things off this morning, folks. Quite a day to the upside yet again on a 15-minute basis. We just pulled back from the highs pre-market. S&Ps up by more than 2% right now. Let's take that Fibonacci number off as we blow through those levels. Trading at 37.66, not that long ago, folks. Remarkable, on Thursday, you were as low as 3,500. You're talking about 260 S&P points. Just from where we were yesterday, zooming in, 8.30 a.m. as I was coming on the air, we're talking about uh, 130 S&P points above that price level, and we were already in positive territory action. Pretty remarkable bounce across the board. You get the NASDAQ 100 up 2.4% right now. The Dow up 1.9%, we'll call it. How about the Dow? More than 2,000 points. You're talking about 2,100 points to the upside from 28,600 to 30,877. We're just off the highs this morning. Bitcoin, not quite the same acceleration. Interesting to see. Uh, there's a lot of correlation there between some of those cryptos and especially the NASDAQ 100, the Qs for some time. Uh, but check it out. It is higher, but not the type of move that you're getting in some of the other markets. Ethereum is just back to where it was on Friday's action. So pay attention to that. Uh, cryptos not keeping up with the market to the upside right now. Crude lower 83.82 on the price of crude. We're as low as 83.60. Lower territory yet again on that crude price. The gold contract down about four bucks to 16.59. You talk about some volatility yesterday on crude, man. Up to 16.75, we finish out the session at about 16.55. We're technically negative by four dollars on the session in gold, silver positive by five pennies. There's some volatility on silver as well, and we jump to notes and bonds. Volatility across the board. We're talking about a 10-year right now, 3.97 percent. The yield on the U.S. 10-year. I mean, check out the moves in both directions, man. From Thursday's CPI number, you get the initial drop, you get the acceleration into Friday, you get a drop yet again, you get an acceleration into Monday morning, you get a drop yet again, and what do we get? We get an acceleration into Tuesday morning. We're gonna get a drop yet again. It's happened each time, folks. We've traded higher to about eight or nine in the morning each time, okay? Whether it's Thursday coming into the CPI, whether it was Friday coming into the open, and look at that, Monday, yesterday, nine, nine o'clock in the morning, you saw a high before you had a sell-off in the 10-year. We had a sell-off this morning at about midnight. I say this morning as early as it can be. From midnight until 5.30, you're pushing higher yet again. But this is the time the markets like to sell off recently over the last three days. We'll see if it holds. And let's jump to some currencies. Dollar index continuing lower. We got a 111 handle, basically at the lows of yesterday. But that was quite a sell-off, man. You go from 113 to 112. Just like that, you're now below where you were on the acceleration Thursday for the CPI. You jump over to the euro US dollar. Catching a lift now on a daily basis, folks. We've been talking about these trend lines, bringing them up, keeping on our radar. You know, if you're looking for an area to sell the euro, US dollar, and I am not a Forex trader, folks, uh, but that's a pretty well defined channel line. And we got lower lows and lower highs. You've caught a little bit of a bid. We're up to 98.5, but as it shows, somewhere in the range of the upper boundary of that channel line on the euro, US dollar, we'll see if it holds. We'll see if we can get above it. Currencies. Always important for the market these days. We jump over to the pound, which is its own animal these days. Pound back within the channel line, but still a negative channel. Uh, not quite as well intact as the euro US dollar. And we jump over to the yen. And it just don't stop on the yen, man. 149.28 is the high earlier today, folks. You take a look at it. Whoops. Back out a little bit. There's your volatility up to 149.28. Volatility at 5 in the morning. We're still sitting at 149 right now. That yen. It looks the weakest of them all, at least when you're talking about the euro, the basket of currencies, and the dollar index, or you're talking about the pound. Uh, there is no reprieve right now for the dollar yen. I was listening to my dad's program yesterday. And yeah, I mean, gold, folks, you know, gold could be a lot lower if the, it just wasn't getting decimated on a currency basis because you're talking about in March going from 115 to 150, okay? Now, gold, quite a pullback, okay? Gold was at... 
2078. So very related. It's been negative territory since then, right, from about 2100. This is a daily, though, folks. It was only above 2000 for two days. So we've traded from about 2000 to 1700. Okay, well, at the same time, you've had the yen go from 115 to 150. If you want to have your mind blown, I'll pull it up sometime in the program, folks. We're going to talk to our man Kevin Hanks in the next segment. Uh, sometime after that, I'll pull it up. You can pull it up yourself. Just uh, look for what gold has done in other currencies. Shouldn't be surprising, right? The yen, whew. Hopefully, TFNN, if we have any listeners out there in, in Japan, give us a call. Please, somehow, send us an email, Tommy at TFNN.com. If you're holding any gold in Japan, man, you have made out like a bandit. Uh, so yeah, doesn't seem like it's a store of value over here as the dollar is crushing everything across the globe. But that's not always how it's gonna be, folks. We are in a unique cycle right now. And I know they say this time it's different. It's not always different, okay? But it's hard to deny what is going on in terms of the strength of the US economy that is weakening, but we have the strength to come at it with the rate hikes. We have the inflation that's gonna force us to come at it with the rate hikes. Uh, yields are showing it as the 10 year hovers right near 4% right now. Uh, the yield curve, curve showing a possible recession with the inversion going on. Uh, but yeah, we see it in, in the currency action and it's not always gonna be that case. A lot of things line up right now for the US dollar, right? And the trends though, man, He's talking about, I mean, this trend, right? The dollar index. Now, this one is just since February, where you go from 96 to 111, okay? But put it back on a three-year weekly. Yeah, and you're basically talking about this move started in May of 2021, and you're talking about a move that's 17 months in the making. The dollar was at 90 at that time. May of 2021, accelerating higher over that time. Remarkable, man. When you look at it, let's look at the dollar yen going back on a three-year basis. Dollar yen, you go back to the beginning of 2021 and you were actually at 103. And that, that was quite, I mean, even a move last year, which is dwarfed by the move this year in the yen, from 103 to 115, that's a pretty large move on a percentage basis when you think about the buying power it would have. We'll pull up the chart of the dollar in the yen uh, just to illustrate how much money has been made if you're holding gold in any of the currencies that have gotten hammered. In the in the dollar index, not so much the case, but that will not always be the case, as we know. Taking a look at the S&Ps right now, zooming in on the action, they were talking about this in the den earlier. If you take a look at where we are from the September 13th high, folks, to the pullback, we're right at that 3A2 of about 36, 3761, 3762. We're sitting there at that price point of 3763 right now on the S&Ps. Uh, we'll see where we go, but always a critical area of the S&Ps. Now, it's interesting, man. We come in, we got Netflix earnings coming up. We have a big week of earnings, man. Netflix, this morning, you're up by about four bucks. This thing accelerates higher from 230 to 250 almost yesterday, back to 245. We're up by five bucks today. You jump over to the Analyze tab. They are out with their numbers after the bell today, and that's a premium for you, folks. Uh, $26.73 Netflix in terms of the expected move in one way or the other. So you're talking about more than a 10% move on their numbers after the bell. It's been all pain recently, uh, but we'll see. I mean, interesting, right? We're trading the prices basically of that first sell-off on now two earnings ago. Yeah, I guess that's not the first sell-off. That was the big drop at the beginning of the year. All right, folks, stay tuned. We'll be coming back, talking to our man Kevin Hicks from Fast Market, TD Ameritrade Network. We'll be right back, folks. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&P futures up by 73 points right now. You're looking at the NASDAQ 100. You're up 257. That's a solid 2.3% in the green right now. You got the S&Ps on a percentage basis right at 2% in the positive. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks, folks. Every trading day right here. And I believe we have Kevin. Do we got Kevin on the line, my producer? I believe we do. Uh, every trading day, folks, we have Kevin and Tom White and the team at TD Ameritrade Network at 12 noon Eastern time with Fast Market, folks. We're lucky to talk to Kevin every Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday. And Kevin Hanks, the last time I talked to you, man, I had to pull it up on the Thinkorswim platform. I got the S&P futures Thursday at about 9 o'clock. The S&Ps were trading at about 3,500. I pulled out my calculator, Kevin. I said, we're 260 points higher. I said, what is that? The calculator told me 7.4% higher since we last talked to you, and I had to have a good laugh. Good morning, Kevin Hanks. What's happening, man? Tommy O'Brien, you know, uh, someone asked me the other day, are the markets going up or down? I said, yes, they are. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're going to move, Tommy. You know, I'm a big fan of watching the news flow, right? Watching micro macroeconomic data, but also watching the news flow. And the news flow right now, void of any macroeconomic data. Remember, we're, we have a very light week for economic data this week, not till next Thursday and Friday of next week do we get any significant top tier economic data any inflation data is next friday the 28th so we've got some room here and earnings let's face it have been fairly positive so far now it's been financials and it's been uh airlines that have mainly come out but johnson and johnson came out today and so we've got some positive earnings now you know goldman sachs is up this morning and their earnings beat expectations, but still down 43% from a year ago. So everyone has to understand that. Their CEO, David Solomon, came out and basically warned that a recession is on the horizon. So, you know, this is probably 
a something that resembles a bear market rally. How long can that go? I have no idea. But the uh, you know the high frequency trade has got this market on the news flow uh, ahead of the opening here. We'll see what it does once the market opens. But wow, there is some serious movement going on here, Tommy. It is pretty amazing, the volatility, Kevin. We have the VIX right now actually trading lower, not too surprising with what the market's been doing, uh, pairing some of the gains, but still sitting at a pretty healthy number of about almost 31 right now. I got it at 3085 on the Thinkorswim platform. Uh, yesterday, it drops, Kevin, the, the VIX from about 32 to 31 right now. Pretty strong numbers. JP Morgan, I talked percentage with you on the S&P. Uh, I just pulled it up since we talked to you at 9 o'clock on Thursday. JP Morgan is up almost 18% from like 102 to 118. Just huge moves across this market. We get... Uh, a company that's had some huge moves recently, Netflix after the bell tonight. Uh, what are you guys talking about on the program coming up at 12 o'clock today, Kevin? Well, you, 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 you just got it, Tommy. We're going to talk about Netflix. We're going to nice. talk about United Airlines. We're going to look at the other names. Let me see what our third name is. I know we've got United Airlines and Netflix. And then we'll look at Procter & Gamble, a another consumer staple. So, yeah, great day of of earnings trades today, Tommy. You know what? Let's. Uh, I'll throw a little bit of uh, Procter and Gamble and maybe Netflix. Netflix. What do you think of Amazon now that they have the Thursday night football, Kevin, for the streaming? I was talking to friends recently, and so they're going to be selling ads. I think it's about five hundred thousand dollars a pop for thirty seconds. They said that more people signed up in that three-hour period on the first week they had it than any time ever. Not really, you know, uh, too important of a number in terms of their market capitalization. But I started thinking, Kevin, who has more data on consumers, right? Some companies, but um, Amazon is a big one. What would it be like for a company like Procter & Gamble, man, where you're literally, and maybe they can't do it just yet, but you know, you're saying serve serve ads to people watching live NFL football that uh, you know haven't bought detergent in three weeks, but have bought it recently in the last two to three months. What's your general take as we come into Netflix earnings tonight, how that whole, that whole area is changing in terms of streaming and live sports now? Yeah, let's talk about Amazon and Procter & Gamble. How much Procter & Gamble product do you think gets sold on Amazon on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis, right? A consumer staple with a massive portfolio of products. And so, you know, I don't know if e-commerce and retail is going to be the difference maker going forward for Amazon, but you can't argue with what that, that they've taken over in many ways e-commerce and and shopping in general now i still think the biggest part of their growth is amazon web services that's where this company is getting their growth remember amazon is starting to get into healthcare. i think Ooh. that's where they'll try to grow in the future remember remember what amazon does tommy amazon attacks middlemen and margins high margin businesses that's what they go after you, you know, so retail, though they're massive, that's probably not their future in terms of growing the company and growth. It's these other places. So Amazon's an unbelievable company to watch. I think Thursday Night Football has been an enormous success for them. Targeted advertising, if that's what you're looking for, that's what Amazon is offering. So, yeah, it's the, the evolution of this part of the economy, Tommy, just incredible. It's a great take, man. I appreciate the take, as always. I agree with a lot of it. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a game-changer, number one. They're spending a billion dollars a year for it, folks, and they don't get the best games. There was one statistic, I think, last Thursday, Kevin, saying there had been 45 straight drives and only one touchdown recently on Thursday Night Football. They said that had some tough games. I think it was 0-0 going into it. But what hey, they easy. Think, hey that, that, that was my Chicago Bears last, last, I last Thursday, I, so I appreciate <laughs> I I understand the lack of offense. It's uh, it, but either way, guess what? People are talking about it, man. And they don't they, they have so many ways that they can capitalize. And I just thought, you know, and exactly like you say, folks, Procter and Gamble. I'm looking forward to you guys covering Kevin. It just made me think about it because that was the exact example that I had used to my friends saying, man, 
can you imagine, right, that lineup of products, and you can literally pin down, because I do, man, I order every, from folks, I just ordered pacifiers on there, man, Kevin, you know, we still got a little baby in the house that likes pacifiers, man, I order everything, pull up Amazon, it's done, it's here tomorrow, uh, interesting where we go, and we look forward to the conversation on Netflix coming up tonight. Kevin, we appreciate the time, as always, man, we look forward to the show at 12, we'll be watching today, and we'll talk to you tomorrow. Thanks for having me on, Tommy, have a great day. Always a pleasure. Folks, tune in. You heard it. They're going to be talking about a little bit of Netflix tonight. They'll be talking a little bit of airlines as we get uh, United jumping over. United, their numbers after the bell, $2 move right now. So you're talking about just over a 5% move priced in for United. We jump over to Procter & Gamble. They'll be out with their numbers tomorrow. You're talking about a $4.34 move. And if you're not familiar, folks, I'm going to pull up after this break. We'll come back for the open uh, at 930. We go to break in about 60 seconds right, right now. And I'll pull up the Procter & Gamble lineup of goods because even if you understand how big they are, if you haven't looked at it going down the list, it seems like they offer every single thing in, in the entire grocery store, whether you realize it or not. They have every single thing in terms of you think that you, you got three different choices for detergent. You don't have three different choices for detergent. You have three choices that all result in you buying some type of detergent from Procter & Gamble, as in they have a lineup that even competes with itself. All right, with that in mind, where do we go on the open, folks? We get the S&Ps right now up by 80 points right near the highs of the session. That's 2.17% in the positive. NASDAQ 100, you're 2.5%. Kevin talked about Amazon quite a couple days, man. I think yesterday I saw it was up 6%, clawing back what it had yesterday. Look at this morning. You're going to open up more than 5 no, about $5, $4.50. What is that? Pushing 3 to 4% open on uh, positive on the open for Amazon. All right, folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve and a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. DFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. 
This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the markets open. You're looking at an S&P positive by about two and a quarter percent. NASDAQ 100, you catch a lift almost to the session highs. Pre-market up 2.7 percent. The Dow's up 589. That's almost up 2 percent. How about the Russell up 2.2 percent as well? We jump over to the VIX right now. VIX, negative action, but not as much as you may think, man. Think where we are. Pay attention to this. OK, folks, I always bring this up. You have the VIX right now trading basically where you were for the middle of the day yesterday. Market dramatically higher from where it was middle of the day yesterday. Zooming in, that level in the S&P was at about 36.93. What's that telling you? As this market has drifted from 3,700 to 3,780, the market said, no way, man. We are just as volatile to the downside right now with keeping the protection we have in place, in place and willing to pay the premium to put that protection in place is staying there. People are not willing to accept less premium because the expectation that this market could sell off, because we've seen it before, folks, but it's not happening just yet, as it holds the gain so far on the open right now. We're up by 85 points in the S&P. Uh, I talked about Procter & Gamble real quick to go through some of them, because I was doing it during the break, folks. It's just remarkable, most of all, how they compete with themselves with brands within the same categories. You talk about baby care, they got loves and they got pampers. You're going to buy one, you're going to buy the other. Either way, you're buying from Procter & Gamble, let alone some of the others in there. Uh, you got Bounce, Bounce, some good old paper towels in there. Downy, right? When you talk about laundry, I talked about it. You buying Tide or you buying Gain? You buying Era? Either way, you're buying Procter & Gamble, along with the other brands they have in there. Bounty, Charmin, Puffs, uh, Feminine Care, Razors, Gillette or Braun. Either way, you're going with Procter & Gamble. Venus, that's right. Head & Shoulders, Herbal Essences, Old Spice, classic, and a new one. Uh, Pantene, right? Going down the line, folks, it is remarkable, that company. And I really don't have a position in them whatsoever. I have traded them before. Uh, they are everywhere, though. And to think about what they would be willing to pay for that type of action, when you are talking about willing to uh, serve up, I mean, think how much more, more valuable those ads are to a company like Procter & Gamble with the targeting Amazon could have when they're literally buying the product on Amazon. It's going to be, folks, that you're buying the product. You're literally watching Prime within Amazon on a web browser, whether it's on a TV or not, you click the button, you, you, you hit buy. As the ad is up there, you're gonna be able to hit buy. It's happening. Um, so Amazon, they spent a billion dollars of it on it. One of my friends keeps bringing that up and it is a lot of money and most companies would not be able to recoup that money. Now I do have Amazon. I've been in Amazon Bull for a while, even as they pull back. And I, Kevin put it spot on, man. The growth is in AWS for sure, in terms of cloud computing. It's really cool, though, I think, that they have the retail side, that they dominate so well, and, man, they do processes so well. And he was right. They target those areas, man, where there's a middleman, where there's some margins. Healthcare, if they ever crack that one, man, they will just skyrocket to the moon, and somebody should crack that uh, whole sector in terms of the middlemen and the type of money that gets siphoned out because of how unaware people are about prices because it's a third-party system. Most people have insurance, right? They just get billed, there's no price discovery, the whole market is skewed in their favor. Somebody should be able to change that. And Amazon is trying. And most of the time when they're trying, and I think they're gonna be pretty relentless on this one because it's such a reward at the end of things, but man, they can recoup that billion dollars because not only are they signing people up, but then they're selling ads and they're selling the best kind of ads I can imagine, man. If I was in Procter & Gamble, I would just want to be all over it. I'd be telling Amazon, listen, you got to get more live sports, man. Get people glued to your television where I can just serve them up ads that they can click with their mouse while they're watching Tom Brady play Patrick Mahomes, right? Either way, you get the point, man, S&Ps. Now, I also talked about gold and yen. So jumping around a bit, let me pull this up real quick as I had it. I had it all set. What happened here? Let me pull up the month. There we go. Uh, this is just over at Kitco, okay, which is an internet site that has gold prices over there. You can put it into different currencies. You'd see this on a lot of the different ones, folks, but this is the gold price going back. And look at the run this thing's been in since basically August, uh, yeah, August of 2018, September of 2018. There is June of 2019. This is a monthly chart we're looking at here, okay? June of 2019. Let's see what the dollar yen is doing on June of 2019.
a moment while I pull this up. 2019. Yeah, so we had the end at about 107, right? And it's actually interesting that you did have gold take off a little bit prior to you actually had the yen take off because the yen really took off from about 103 in January of 21. So taking a look at that chart, yeah, it just keeps resetting when I jump away from it for some reason. That's all right. So when you look at that chart, January of 21, where were we then? Okay, so gold in yen, you're looking at about 183,000 yen. And so you're up about 33% in the gold price since that time. And that is from January of 2021, whereas if you take a look at ours, of course, let's see where we were in January of 2021. Yeah, so if you're trading it in yen, you're up 33% in gold. If you're trading it in the dollar, you're down about 200, you're down about 11 or 12%. But you see that you're only down 11 or 12% in the gold contract at a time when you have had the dollar index. Now let's go to the dollar index over that time. Okay, since January of 2021, right? Look at that. You've had the dollar index go up 22%, 23%. You're up by about 21 or 22 on an index that started about 90. So 18 would be 20%. So you're looking at somewhere around 21 or 22%. Dollar index up 21, 22%. Gold down about 12% over that time. If you held gold in the yen over that time, you'd be up 33% over that time. Interesting how they're all related and they are all related. And I bring it up especially, now that's the monthly, let's take a look at things on a five year weekly, okay? This is the dollar index and folks, they trend forever, man, but we're almost running into forever. This dollar index, as, as my dad started talking about it last night, man, you're at like a year and a half, a year and a half. Now the trend really accelerated at the beginning of this year, okay, as the Fed took off, but boy, it started last year, man, even last year. You go from 90 to 96 to begin, that was a one-way move, and then you really accelerate from 96 to about 115, almost the high. You're sitting at about 112. Eventually, this will roll over, roll over folks. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about when you start getting into the Fed. Eventually, they will reach a level, folks. The Fed is determined. They're going to get there, okay? They're going to get to a point that is going to impact this economy and tame inflation. The worry is that they're going to do it, and it's going to hurt the economy too much, okay? They're going to get it done. There's no way they're just going to let inflation run at 8%. Unfortunately, I think they have to do some damage to this economy. There's no way around it, right? The problem is we had too many jobs open. People had too much money. The economy was doing too well. Everything was too high. Housing prices were through the roof. Uh, investment portfolios were through the roof. There's 11 million jobs open so that consumer prices were rising with supply issues and then people were able to pick up the slap slack by getting more in income. Eventually they're gonna tame that, but they have to calm the economy to do it and to thread that needle is almost impossible, I think at this point, especially with how inflation has persisted. It would have been one thing if maybe right out of the gate, you know what, inflation wasn't as persistent as maybe some thought, they start raising rates, Everybody pulls back really quickly. No, that's not the case, man. This is persisting in a big way. And we'll see how crude plays into things as well. Because crude, that's going to help. Energy prices are always going to help when you're talking about prices. And so even over the last, what is that, eight days, we've had crude trade from 93 to 83. Right back near the lows we've had into the 70s, potentially. Stay tuned, folks. We'll come back in three minutes. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. 
With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Excuse me, folks. Sorry for that. I was jumping around on my other screen, pulling up a couple things I want to go over. We have the S&Ps right now up by 75 points. Market holds on to the gains pretty well right now. You have the NASDAQ 100 up 260. That's 2.4 percent of the positive in the Dow right now, up by about 578. Taking a look at the bounce that we have going on, you take a look at the Dow, okay, from the September, 3rd, from the September 13th high. We have the Dow right now trading just above the 50 percent retracement on that number. You, when you take a look, on the S&Ps, we're just bumping into that 382 in the market, kind of holding right near that level right now within a couple points, 3760 to 3762, that area we're trading right now at 3765. We've talked about the I-bonds from the Treasury, folks, and taking a look. So they just announced, uh, or at least experts, they're, they're just analyzing because they have data probably from the CPI in terms of what the next interest rate is going to be in November. That next interest rate is going to be at about... 6.48%. If you were thinking about getting these bonds, folks, I talked about them before. And let me just pull up the website real quick. It's treasurydirect.gov that you pull them up. You create an account. You tie it to your bank account. You can buy $10,000 of these Series I bonds. They are tied to inflation. Right now, you can get 9.62% for six months. Guaranteed is the rate. Okay, and the next rate for the next six months is 6.48. Now, the rate resets every six months. So in November, there's going to be a new rate. But if you get those I bonds in the month of October, you still have time to do it, folks. Okay, and each person can invest $10,000 per calendar year in electronic I bonds at treasurydirect.gov. Okay, here's the page right here. And they even have the series I bonds highlighted directly on their Web page, and this is the Treasury folks that you are at, okay? 9.62%. That's the rate they're going to get reset. And when they get reset, it's going to be at about 6.48%. Okay, now that you know that rate as well, well, you can take the 9.62 that you know you're getting over six months. You take the 6.48 that you're going to get over the next six months, because here's the key you have to keep these for at least a year. And you pay a small penalty if you keep them less than five years. But the penalty is you only give back three months worth of interest. OK, so let's run this in terms of what you could potentially get just for a year. If you keep it the minimum year, you take it out, you give back a quarter of the year's interest. What are you getting? Well, 9.62 plus 6.48, you're getting about 16 percent 
divided by two, the average, 8% is what you're getting for the year, okay? Because you're going to get 9.62, and it's actually going to be a little bit more because it does get compounded. Then you'll take that money, and you'll get 648 over the next six months, that puts you at about 8%. If you have to give back even some capital, you want to take it out right at a year, you have to. Uh, you don't get that full interest rate fee. Well, what do you have to give back? It's just 2% because that would be a quarter of it. What does that kick you down to? That's meaning that minimum you're getting 6% guaranteed after the fee for 12 months. And 6%, folks, is well over the one-year CD rate going on right now. I'll pull that up as well at some point. But take a look at it because the 9.62 is only available until the end of the month. So you're talking about running into that time. Still have time. Uh, but you want to create that account tied to your bank account. And you can get that done. Interesting to see that. Okay, what else do we have going on? Starboard. Yeah, they like Salesforce, man. Starboard, uh, higher today. We'll jump over to their shares. Uh, significant opportunity remains in the enterprise software maker. That's them. Uh, they come in. Significant stake without specifying the dollar amount. Starboard. Interesting to see what they do with that. An activist investor as to how they're going to spur them on. We jump over to Salesforce. They catch a 5.5% pop. We have pulled back on them. Yeah, they were up to 160. And this stock, man. We did have this stock at some point in my newsletter. We got out with the stop, thankfully, as in not the max pain um, for the pullback because, boy, it has been quite a pullback indeed. They bought Slack for, what, $27 billion, something like that. And uh, growth stock's just been pummeled, to say the least. This thing basically cut in half, even at this price point. And that's the first bounce you've gotten for a while. But guess what? Those active investors, they probably saw this stock go from 311 to 160 and said, hey, finally, there's value, man. This thing's been at this price point since about May, and you're trading even lower to 140. Let's jump around and see where we are in terms of market capitalization. So they're out with their numbers late November, and we're talking about a company, $156 billion market cap right now for uh, Salesforce. Yeah, and the market fading a bit. Let's see. We'll jump back to a short term. S&P is now down just slightly less than 2%. We're trading at 3760 right now. Be interesting to see how this holds, man, because it's it's going to it's going to be interesting, folks, to say the least. It's quite a lift. When I talked to Kevin, right? We're up 7.6% folks in the S&Ps. At least we were. Yeah, 3760 I was using. We're up 7.6% from the last time that I talked to Kevin. It's wild what happens, folks, when I talked to him on Thursday morning. Right, we've gotten some economic numbers Thursday morning. We always talk to Kevin just before the opening bell. Okay, so the market sometimes reacts out of the gate as it did on Thursday, and we are literally 7.6% higher than we were. Keeping in mind, man, the market are we really going to trade up 15% from the lows of Thursday? I don't know, but guess what? I wouldn't have put it at 7.6% at that number of 3,500. Not exact, excuse me, doesn't mean you had to be selling at 3,500. But this is quite a lift in the face of what the inflation is saying and what the Fed is willing to do. Excuse me. And where we are. All right. What else do we have pulled up? Let's jump around. Uh, yeah, let's talk about Bank of America. So they're talking about screaming capitulation. we got a lot of cash out there. That's what they're talking about as well. Uh, the bank's monthly global fund manager survey screams macro capitulation, investor, investor capitulation, start of policy capitulation even. They wrote in a note. Out today, they expect stocks to bottom in the first half of next year after the Fed Reserve finally pivots away from raising interest rates. Pretty reasonable opinion, folks. The Fed's going to keep hiking. They have some ways to go. Now, what's what's built into everything here, though, is that the Fed continues their hiking cycle for three or four months. We see an impact in inflation rates. They can let off the gas a little bit. The lag allows it to keep up and inflation goes away. It's possible, but man, we've seen everybody so wrong for so long. So just make sure you got the spikes up on your back, man. Uh, market liquidity has deteriorated significantly, noting investors have 6.3% of their portfolios in cash, the highest since when? April of 2001. And then a net 49% of the participants are underweight. Equities, taking a look at the numbers, okay? Now, this is the cash level. Pretty simple to understand. They just said, what are we at, 6.9%? 6.3. 6.3% of their portfolios in cash, the highest since April of 2001. You look at that number, okay, man, I mean, you are going back to 2001. Look at even where we were in cash to some of the market collapses, right? 2008, 2012, 16, uh, April of 2020. You never even got to that number in terms of the number of people in cash as the market sold off during a pandemic. 
Yeah, as the earnings season gains traction, 83% of investors expect global profits to worsen over the next year. 91% say global corporate profits are unlikely to rise 10% or more in the next year. Just a lot of pessimism, man, across the board. And uh, yeah, and then let's jump to the actual Goldman numbers. Now, we've had some strong numbers in banks. Man, I talked about it. You want some percentages. JP Morgan, right? Up about 18%, folks, from where it was coming into Thursday on the CPI at about 102. You make it to 120 this morning. That's up, what, 18 bucks? Yeah, not quite 20%, but quite a run. You're backing off a bit on those numbers right now for JP Morgan. But Goldman Sachs, we'll go over it because the banks are in an exceptional spot right now for fixed income trading and for net interest income. Without that, let's see how the rest of the companies do. We'll be right back, folks. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have a little bit of a deterioration. I mean, tough to call it a complete deterioration. You still have the S&Ps up 1.6% right now. We get the NASDAQ up 1.7%, but we got a sell-off, man. NASDAQ 100 just dumped more than 1% from where we were. S&Ps right now, you're up 1.6%. What did we just sell off? 30 points? 30 points since the open on the S&Ps. The Dow right now, we just gave up 200 points in the Dow. You jump over to crude. Look at that acceleration on crude, man. 82.71, gold contract down about six bucks. Let's see how the dollar index is trading right now. Dollar index, 
A uh, little bit of a lift as the market sells off a bit. We'll jump over to the VIX as we get a sell off. The VIX right back to 3107 right now. And as I stated, folks, when we were at the open, the S&Ps were up 80 points from where you were yesterday. And the VIX was right at the same level. Pay attention when you get that type of action because guess what? The VIX is telling you, yeah, we're high up our 80 points. Uh, but the market is still not willing to move the premium and the ability for people to pay that premium thinking that markets could accelerate lower. And you're seeing it in that Bank of America sentiment, right? Jumping back to when we came into that break, talking about we're coming in earnings, man. We get Netflix after the bell tonight. Uh, we get IBM this week. I believe IBM's tomorrow. Let's jump over real quick as we wrap up. IBM earnings, they are tomorrow. We get Tesla earnings, I believe, Thursday. No, Tesla tomorrow as well. Yeah, Tesla tomorrow as well. Netflix, Tesla, IBM, among many others. Now, we got Goldman today. They are higher, holding on to those gains up by 3.8%. All the banks dramatically higher. JP Morgan up by 2.5% today. Bank of America up 3.5% today. But folks, those numbers for Goldman, right? I mean, the banks are in their own class right now. The net interest income numbers, they all even beat the expectation and they're through the roof and they're probably going to be going higher is what everybody figured out. Bonds have been crazy. We saw this happen during the pandemic. Fixed income trading through the roof. You're talking about uh, trading operations, $6.2 billion. OK, investment banking is sliding big time. But these banks before in terms of what they make for that trading revenue exceeded the 5.7 they were looking for. Investment banking fell 57 percent. Banks are in the class of their own, man. They kick things off. But it's really going to matter right now when we talk about the companies that we're going to get like IBM, Procter & Gamble, Netflix, Tesla. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Stay tuned. Live programming all day. Basil Chapman's coming up right now. Have a great Tuesday, everybody.